Hey guys, this is Valentina Palladino for Ars Technica, and today I'm here with the Fitbit Ionic smartwatch. Uh, so this is Fitbit's first real smartwatch. It did come out with the Fitbit Blaze last year, which was more kit tailored towards the fitness side. Um, but now this is a full-on smartwatch. It runs Fitbit's own OS, so it's really got a lot to prove with this device. We've been waiting for a Fitbit smartwatch for a while, particularly after they purchased Pebble at the end of last year. So not only does this have to be the best fitness device at the $300 level, because this is $300, um, but it also has to be a decent smartwatch. So I've been spending some time with it, and I'm gonna tell you some of the really good things and the really bad things about the Ionic. So before we get into the good and bad things about the Ionic, let's just talk about its design for a second. So this looks like a hybrid of the Blaze and the Fitbit Surge, uh, if you ask me. <laughs> so it has this module in the middle, which is similar to the Blaze. However, it doesn't have that kind of weird cage that the Blaze had around it. Um, it's one continuous piece, uh, and it's made out of nano molding technology. So that kind of fuses metal and plastic together so the Fitbit could make it as one piece. And also it's relatively thin, um, and that's made possible by the fact that Fitbit inside of this device um, kind of grouped the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and um, GPS antennas all together. So that's how it's able to be a little bit thinner than we might have Im imagined it. Um, it also has detachable bands, and I actually prefer the mechanism on the Ionic to the mechanism on the Apple Watch. I have a Series 2 here. Um, so what Fitbit did was it added these little tiny notches, little buttons at the end of each, at the end of the module that you can just pop out like that. And it's a little bit easier than the Apple Watch because with that one you really have to like stick your nail or like a pointy thing into the actual module. So this is much easier. And you just snap it back in like that. So it's very easy. And it also comes with, well, you can buy them, they're separate. That's a regular band and this is the sport band and a leather band option right here. So. Fitbit did a lot to kind of make it as customizable as some of its other devices. Another really great thing about the Ionic is the display. This is an LCD display and it can reach up to a thousand nits of brightness, which is awesome for outdoor use, whether you're in direct sunlight or don't really have a good lighting condition right now, you'll be able to see this. I never had a problem seeing this anywhere where I was. And that will come in big handy when you're outside using the GPS on an outdoor run in a really bright sunny day. It also has NFC capabilities inside of it, so you can use Fitbit Pay to pay for things when you're out and about. And it has a 195 milliamp battery inside of it, and that should be able to last more than four days on a single charge or up to 10 hours in GPS mode. So we'll get to the battery part a little bit later, but that's the size of the battery that's inside the Ionic. Another interesting thing that's inside the Ionic is an SpO2 monitor, and that is meant to detect the amount of oxygen in the blood. And Fitbit right now is saying that in the future, this could possibly help the Ionic alert the user to something like sleep apnea, which involves you know, a decrease um, or less amount of oxygen in the blood that you need. Um, right now though, you won't even know that it's in there because there's no real consumer facing um, feature that uses the SpO2 monitor at this moment. So that's more of a future thing that Fitbit wants to develop, but as of right now, um, they kind of hyped it a little bit, but there's not really anything on the Ionic that you would like know that that sensor is inside of it. So let's talk about some of the good things about the fitness aspects of the Ionic. So one of the things I really liked was the interface for the exercise app. It's pretty nice. Now Fitbit has incorporated full color photos of real people in the exercise app and in the coaching app as well. So it's not like there are these little stick figure icons like guiding you through a workout or um, those are your only options that you have. Um, that might just be an, an aesthetic thing to some, but I really enjoyed seeing that and it really does make use of the nice display on the Ionic. So it just kind of ups the experience of using it as an exercise device. And another thing that I really liked about the exercise app is that you can kind of customize all the data fields that you see in a specific exercise. So if I'm running, I can have my distance on the top of the screen, my heart rate on the bottom. And what's really cool is that there's a swipeable portion in the middle, which you could set to be a specific stat if you only want three things there. But what I've been doing is just been swiping through other pieces of data, like my pace or the time of day or 
anything that I didn't have set on those first two like top and bottom uh, fields, I could just swipe through in the middle, which is really nice. Another thing that I really liked about the fitness experience are the limited number of free guided workouts that are on the Ionic at launch. So we have three different workouts you can access in Coach right now, and they are guided workouts, just like similar to what was on the Blaze. They are powered by Fitstar at the moment, but we'll get into Fitstar's future in, in a little while. But the guided workouts were really cool. There's one that I particularly like called the 10 minute ab workout. And what happens is that it uses, again, real pictures of real people doing exercises on the screen so you know exactly what you have to do for this set for this 30 seconds and then you move on to the next exercise. And the watch will vibrate after you have completed a set, um, after you've completed those 30 seconds of plank or whatever you'd be doing at that time. So you know without even looking at the device when you are going to be moving on to the next exercise in the circuit. So I really like guided workouts. I think they're a great feature on any type of device, especially like fitness devices like this at such a high price point. So I really am happy to see at least some included on the Ionic. Another great thing about the Ionic is the Fitbit app. The Fitbit mobile app works on iOS, Android, and Windows phones, and it is just a really great experience to use. I would say it's probably the best app, like mobile app companion for any type of fitness device. And Fitbit has always really excelled in this area. They make it very easy for any user of any type of fitness ability to see every piece of data that you'd want in a very understandable way. Now there are some things I don't like about the fitness experience on the Ionic. One of them being that the on-device um, activities that you can track is a little bit limited when you compare it to something like the Apple Watch. So you have exercise shortcuts is what they're called and you can have seven of them loaded onto the Ionic at one time. Um, there's a full list of 20 that you can add to the Ionic at any period of time. You can go into the app and switch them out uh, depending on your lifestyle, but you can only add seven at a time. Um, on something like an Apple Watch, you can have a bunch of them that are preloaded, they're already there, and then there's this kind of miscellaneous category called other that you could change at your leisure whenever you're doing a boxing workout or something that's a little bit off the wall that's not like your standard running workout. And you can have access to more workouts in the Fitbit app, but the only way that you can do that is record the workout on the Ionic and then go into the Fitbit app and categorize it as something else. And that's where you have like an entire library of activities that you could categorize the activity as. So it's a little nitpicky. I just like to have a lot of trackable activities on the watch because then it makes less that I have to do after I work out in the app or somewhere else. Another not so great thing is that Fitbit Coach only has three guided workouts available right now on my watch. It will have four later on this fall and one of them is called the dynamic workout which I'm super bummed that I couldn't try. We'll get to that in a second. But Fitbit Coach is mostly gonna lie behind a paywall. You're gonna have to pay a monthly subscription fee to get access to a bunch of different guided workouts, a bunch of different weeks long fitness programs like how to train for a 5K. And it, you'll also need to pay for health routines that Fitbit will have available, like how to cut sugar out of your diet. There'll be kind of like a diet guide for you to participate in over the course of a couple weeks, but you will have to pay for that. Now, currently, Fitbit has Fitstar, which acts basically the same way. It's a, it's a subscription plan that you can get access to similar things right now, especially guided workouts. But in the future, it's just gonna kind of be rebranded as Fitbit Coach, and you're still gonna have to pay for all of those cool guided programs. Now, I don't really have a problem with subscription services. I think that they can be really useful, especially if you're very into what you're doing. If someone's really into fitness and they want to switch up their workouts a lot, and they wanna have that kind of ease of mind of having a guided thing at their on their wrist at all times, it could be a really great option. But what I would like to see are more free guided workouts, particularly on the Ionic, so that people can get a feel of them. I feel like if you're spending $300 on a device, I want more than three or four guided workouts. I would like seven to 10 at least, just so I can kind of get a feel for them, see if I really like them, do them over maybe a week or two or a month, and then maybe I'll be more inclined to pay for your service after that. The more I can try something out, the better. Uh, so I'm not asking for unlimited guided workouts, but I think that there should be some more options available for users before they decide if they wanna pay for Fitbit Coach. So it's obvious that Fitbit knows fitness, but this is the first device that we really have seen any smartwatch capabilities on, so we're gonna talk about 
the good and bad things on that side of the device. So some one of the really great things about the Ionic is that as a smartwatch is that it works across the major, you know, OS platforms. This will work completely with iOS devices, with Android devices, and with Windows phones. So chances are if you already have one of those devices, you will be able to use the Ionic without any trouble. Another great thing on the smartwatch side about the Ionic is the battery life. Fitbit really did well with the battery life of the Ionic. Um, so they anticipated more than four days on a single charge or 10 hours with GPS. Um, I've been using this device. I've had to plug it in on occasion for about five minutes at a time dealing with some issues. But other than that, I've been using it for about five days straight. And this is wearing it also to bed to track my sleep as well as throughout the day. Um, I've used GPS once or twice um, and I've been working out with it pretty much every day. And the battery life is down to about 40%. So that's really, really great. Like I said, I've only used GPS a couple of times. So if you heavily use GPS in your workouts, it might be a little bit less around if you're using it around the same time as I have so far. Um, but that's an awesome battery life, especially compared to things like Android Wear devices or to the Apple Watch, which at maximum can usually last around 18 hours or two days on a single charge, depending on how often you use the most battery draining features. Um, so, I mean, if you just want something that you never have to worry about charging, I mean, the Ionic is the thing to get. Another great thing about the Ionic is Fitbit Studio. Um, so this is more on the developer side. It's an entirely web-based tool that developers can use um, to create watch faces and apps for the Ionic um, and for Fitbit's smartwatch OS in general. It uses JavaScript, CSS, and SVG, so it's pretty accessible for developers of all different types and different um, skill levels. So Fitbit is hoping that this will encourage developers to at least experiment with app making and watch face making for the device. That makes me really hopeful for the future for the Ionic because right now there aren't that many third party apps, but hopefully developers will kind of embrace the ease of Fitbit Studio in the future and at least experiment with creating watch faces and creating apps similarly to maybe they did with Pebble when Pebble watches were still alive and running. Now there are some bad things about the Ionic in terms of it being a smartwatch. Uh, one thing that I really didn't like was the smartphone notification experience. Um, it's very, very basic. And I've used Android Wear devices in the past and the Apple Watch in the past. And if you're looking for something that will give you rich notifications, the Ionic is not it. Um, most of the smartwatch uh, notifications are all text-based. There's a couple of emojis you know, thrown in there, um, some color thrown in there. Um, and some app icons, but there's not really much you can do besides look at the notifications. And a while ago that was probably acceptable, but now with smartwatches becoming smarter and you can do more with them on your wrist, I kind of expected a little bit more. Um, so you can't respond to messages, you know, there's no um, virtual assistant on the Ionic, like there is Siri on the Apple Watch or Google Assistant on Android Wear. You can't use that to help you out in any way. So I was really disappointed in the fact that the Ionic's notifications just were kind of very bland and sad. Another thing that kind of disappointed me was the fact that you can only have one watch face on the Ionic at one time. Um, so I've gotten very used to, you know, wearing an Apple Watch, you can kind of switch between different watch faces that you've customized um, at your whim. You can have a couple of them preloaded onto the watch at one time. But with the Ionic, you can only have one on the device at one time. You can go into the uh, Fitbit app and change it whenever you'd like. Um, but in my experience, that is very slow. It took probably 30 seconds for the watch to receive the information from my phone to change the watch face. Um, that might just be because the software maybe isn't final yet. Um, the Ionics are not out yet. We have just our press version here. So that could be just a software problem that is fixed with an update. But in my experience, it takes too long to kind of get a new watch face to the Ionic and it's a disappointment that you can only have one at a time. The last thing that's been not so great about the Ionic as a smartwatch is the onboard music experience. Now this kind of crosses over from smartwatch to fitness in a lot of ways because the time you'd probably use your onboard music is out on a run so you don't have to take your phone with you. I have not been able to get any music onto this device at all since I've had it. And that could also be chalked up to some software difficulties on Fitbit's end. Um, but also there are some limitations just in general on the music that you can have on the Ionic. So Fitbit has a partnership with Pandora. So if you are a paid Pandora subscriber, you can download playlists from Pandora to the Ionic. Um, and if you don't have that, your only other option is to download local files, local music from your PC to the Ionic. 
It can hold up to like about around 300 songs, which is pretty decent. Um, but like I said, I haven't been able to get any music onto this, um, and I've been trying to do it using the Connect desktop app, which is Fitbit's kind of desktop software, and that's the only way that you can with local files at least, um, which is pretty clunky. Um, I was really hoping that Fitbit was going to make that experience better in terms of just getting music onto this device because, you know, for a lot of smartwatches, uh, that experience is clunky in general, but I just would have not been able to get any music onto this at all. So Fitbit is aware of the problem that I've been having, so hopefully they have a solution to it soon. Um, hopefully it's like a software update that could fix it, but right now I have not had any luck with any music on it. So after spending a while with the Ionic, I would definitely say that you should not buy it at this moment in time. Um, this is a $300 device. This is not a cheap device, um, as most smartwatches are not cheap. So I personally don't think that this is ready for you, know, you to buy as your primary smartwatch and fitness device. But we already established that Fitbit knows how to do fitness very well, particularly with its mobile app and its other devices. So it is a pretty capable fitness device, but I wanna make direct comparisons depending on the type of device that you already have in terms of your smartphone. So if you already have an iOS device like an iPhone, you should probably just go with an Apple Watch, either the Series 2 or the new Series 3. Those are slightly more expensive, they're around $330, but personally, I think that, that is a better experience both on the smartwatch side, definitely on the smartwatch side, and it's a very comparable experience on the fitness side to using the Ionic. So you're not gonna be missing out on much if you get an Apple Watch, except for guided workouts. The Ionic does a good job of at least having some for you to use. Now, if you have an Android device, I would say that the Fitbit Ionic is a really good fitness alternative to an Android Wear watch because personally, I don't really think that Google Fit is robust enough to do all the things I'd wanna do as you know, just someone who works out a lot. Um, I would want something that is more like the Ionic and Fitbit's software, its mobile app, is much better and much more easy to use and more comprehensive than Google Fit is. So as a fitness device, this would be a good, a good option for somebody who has an Android device. However, if you care at all about your smartwatch experience with an Android phone, you should probably go with an Android Wear device. You know, it's gonna be a little hard because a lot of the Android Wear devices are not the same in terms of if they have GPS or not, if they have, you know, certain hardware features and software features for Google Fit, but, you know, if you find one that you really like and that it has all the smartwatch capabilities that you want, that's probably the better one to go with if you really care about the smartwatch quality of the thing that's on your wrist.